And thank you to all the listeners who have joined us tonight for the celebration of this special moment, the 750th anniversary of the death of St. Thomas. It's good that we come together and uh, have this moment when we can pray together and, um, yeah, contemplate the wisdom of the cross. That's why we're here tonight. So let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts, enkindle in us the fire of your divine love, Send forth thy spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of thy faithful people, grant us by the same light that we always may be wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mary, Queen of Peace, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Holy Father Dominic, pray for us. St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, like we've said, today is a special day when we celebrate, in a way, the life and the, the theology, the preaching, the mystery, the meaning the, of the life of St. Thomas Aquinas. And one thing that we know about St. Thomas Aquinas is that he had a tremendous devotion to the cross of Jesus Christ. He was known to pray before the crucifix a lot as a, as a regular course of prayer in his life. We also know that he received at the end of his life a revelation from Christ crucified as he was adoring an image of Christ crucified. The Lord Jesus spoke to St. Thomas and said, you have written well of me, St. Thomas, what do you seek? And St. Thomas replied, nothing but you, Lord, nothing but you. His whole life was riveted on God, riveted on Jesus Christ, and the eyes of his heart were ever fixed on the cross of Jesus Christ. St. Thomas understood keenly the, the wisdom of the cross, this great mystery of the wisdom of the cross. St. Thomas was a wisdom seeker, and all who love God are wisdom seekers. We want to come to know God, who's the highest explanation of everything in the world. We want to learn how to live from God and from Jesus Christ. So we love wisdom. We seek wisdom. We want to know what life is all about, and we want to know how to live, to live well, and to live wisely. That's what the Lord has called us to do. That's what he's opened up to us in the mystery of his, his son, Jesus Christ, and um, the life he lived on this earth. But more than anywhere else, God opened up to us his wisdom when his own eternal son incarnate, Jesus Christ, went to the cross. It was when Jesus went to the cross that the wisdom of God was revealed, manifested in a most astonishing most striking and most world transforming way. So St. Thomas, knowing this so deeply through his, his faith, his prayer, his study, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of understanding and knowledge and wisdom that, that lit up the, the deep meaning of the cross, St. Thomas realized that there's this immense wisdom of the cross the wisdom of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And we could say that St. Thomas spent his whole life in one way or another pointing to the wisdom of the cross. So it's good that we've come together here to take a few moments this evening to simply ponder the wisdom of the cross, to, to join St. Thomas, who gazes now upon the wisdom of the cross in, in a whole new light, the light of glory, and to, if we can join him in some way, maybe we too could receive many lights and graces to help us to see and understand, to catch a glimpse, we should say, of the wisdom of the cross. So that's what we're going to do is take a few moments this evening just to, to ponder that. So the first thing we need to say about the cross of Jesus Christ and the wisdom in it is that the, the cross of Christ 
is the fulfillment of eternal designs. I mean, this is one of the, the meanings of the term wisdom. God has a plan. He has a plan for the entire world. He has eternal designs. His plans don't change. The plans of his heart are from age to age, it tells us in, in Scripture. Even though the world changes and human beings change, God's plans for us do not change. He knows from all eternity. Uh, the world, all the details of the world, our, our sins, everything. God created this world knowing from eternity that human beings would, would sin greatly. He created this world knowing that the first human beings would turn away from God, that they would eat the forbidden fruit and they would call down upon them, call down upon themselves and all of humanity, the, the penalty of death. But God, in his eternal plan for the world, in his eternal wisdom, planned to save the world from our, from our sins and to save us from the, the death that you know, was incurred by Adam and Eve. And when Adam and Eve incurred the penalty of death, it was death in the sense of a permanent condition. In his wisdom, God planned to save the world from all of that, but he planned to save the world in a specific way. He planned to save the world by sending his eternal son, Jesus Christ, into the world as a human being, to become incarnate as a human being, born of the Virgin Mary, and that his eternal son, Jesus Christ, would go to the cross and bear the, the rigors, the torment of the cross, the whole passion and cross, to bear all of that and die on the cross and do that on behalf of you and me so that he would remain true to the prohibition laid down upon Adam and Eve. He would not go back on his word, and yet he would bear in himself the penalty of death on behalf of us all, and that he, God, would die for us. This is all part of God's eternal plan. It's God's eternal designs. And it's, it's, it's kind of unfathomable to us. I mean, you and I would not design the world this way. And you and I would not save the world this way. We would design the world some other way. And you and I would save the world in some other way. But God, in his all-surpassing, transcendent, amazing wisdom, designed this world this way. And he planned to save it in no other way than by way of the cross. Why? Well, one great reason was simply to demonstrate to you and to me, to show us that we have a God who's willing to die for us. He loves us so much. He's willing to go to the cross for you and for me. And that's really the ultimate sign of love. I mean, it's a great thing for God to give you and me the world to create us. It's a whole other thing for God to become a human being and die for you and for me. But God wanted to do that. As the Lord himself explained in the, at the Last Supper, uh, no man has greater love than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And God wanted to love us with that kind of love, a love that goes the distance, a love that's willing to die for you and for me. That's part of the wisdom of the cross. We could call it the, the wisdom of the fulfillment of eternal designs, but it's also the wisdom of love, of an incomprehensible love, a love that was willing to die for you and for me. So the wisdom of the cross is, is amazing that way. It's, it's this wisdom that's the fulfillment of eternal designs. It's the wisdom of love. There's also another kind of wisdom in, in the cross. There's the wisdom of obedience. Jesus Christ went to the cross voluntarily. You know, the passion and death of the Lord was not something that just happened to him. We need to sit with that for a moment because very often when we think of suffering and think of, of, of death, we think of suffering and death as things that simply happen to us. You know, no one would choose these things. 
But Jesus Christ, you know, his passion and his death was not something that just happened to him. He voluntarily and freely chose to go to the cross. He chose to endure it. He chose to bear it. He chose to, to put up with this mistreatment from his creatures. He chose to do that. And he tells us very clearly in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up again. This command I have from my Father. So Jesus freely chose to go to the cross out of obedience to the, to the Father, to the call of the Father. He did so out of love for the Father, because our obedience comes from our love. But there was a genuine yes to the Father's will. In the Garden of Gethsemane, there's that important moment when the Lord says, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, but not my will. Thy will be done. It's an act of obedience. So there's a wisdom that the Lord reveals to us, the wisdom of obedience. There are many times in life when the, the law of God, the plan of God, may seem to you and me crazy. And we may really wonder, what is God doing? Why is my life going this way? Why are circumstances going this way? Why are these things happening to our family or to our friends or to our health or to our finances or whatever the case may be? And in those moments, we're called to, to join the Lord in this act of saying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me, but not my will, thy will be done. And there's a wisdom in that obedience. There's a, a wisdom in our faith that God is working all things for the good of those who love him. And the Lord demonstrates this wisdom of obedience to the Father. And he calls us into this same obedience, a life of obedience to the Father. There's a wisdom in that that's unfathomable. But there's more in the wisdom of the cross. The Lord, in his act of going to the cross, really shows us all of the virtues. There's a, like a wisdom of teaching or a wisdom that opens us up to us. Here's what a, a virtuous and good human being is. And he, he demonstrates in himself, St. Thomas Aquinas says, the Lord Jesus demonstrates in himself the way of truth, the whole way of truth, the way of the virtues. And there's these marvelous meditations St. Thomas has on Christ crucified, where he explains how Jesus displays all the virtues on the cross. On the cross, Jesus demonstrates this amazing love for, for, for the Father, for you and for me. He demonstrates charity, the virtue of charity. He demonstrates an amazing um, obedience, like we've always sa already said. He, he demonstrates an incredible humility. I mean, the, the humility of Christ crucified is extreme. Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at, but he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, St. Paul tells us. There's, there's an, a humility that the Lord Jesus shows that's incredible. There's also a compassion the Lord has for, for those, I mean, he, the very people that are uh, persecuting him, he, it's like he has compassion upon them. I mean, he he forgives the good thief. He he invites the good thief to his you know into his into his into his life into paradise with him. He forgives those who are mocking him and and all of that. There's an, an incredible mercy the Lord extends to other people on the cross. There's an incredible, amazing patience that he demonstrates. Uh, when he goes to the cross, he's willing to tolerate extreme amounts of pain and affliction and turmoil. Okay, there's an incredible amount of patience the Lord shows. The Lord demonstrates an incredible amount of courage, you know, overcoming 
you know, the, the, the lower sorts of fears that human nature has, especially in the face of imminent, you know, suffering and death. And the Lord demonstrates courage in the face of that. He tramples down fears as he goes to the cross. Pick any virtue you want. You know, humility, courage, patience, compassion, mercy, obedience, charity. The Lord shows all of it on the cross. There's a wisdom there, and it's for our instruction. He went to the cross to show us what virtue is. I mean, it's one thing to, to give lectures about the virtues. It's one thing to give, you know, homilies about the virtues. It's, it's one thing to give instructions to children about the virtues. It's another thing to, to practice the virtues. It's another thing to model the virtues for students or for people by our own behavior, by our own practices. And when Jesus went to the cross, he didn't talk about the virtues. He just practiced them. He demonstrated them with his own actual free choices and his behavior. It's incredible. There's a wisdom there for our instruction. And the cross of Jesus Christ, his passion and his death is like a the real book of virtues for us to read and to study. And that's what St. Thomas would do. He would, he would ponder Christ crucified and for at, at length. And that's what allowed St. Thomas to unfold in his writings. Here's all the virtues that Jesus displays in all these various moments of his passion and death. It's amazing. We should carry out the same kind of exercise, meditating on the passion of Christ and the virtues that he displays. And we will grow in the wisdom of the cross. There's other ways we can think about it, like the wisdom of the kenosis of Christ, you know, his self-emptying. It's amazing. Or the wisdom of his service. You know, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, the Lord says. And when he goes to the cross, he, he demonstrates this in himself. There's a wisdom of service that he shows. He sort of makes this point when he washes the feet of the disciples at the Last Supper. The cross is about service, and there's a wisdom of service there. There's so many things we could say about the wisdom of the cross. It's the wisdom of the fulfillment of eternal designs. There's a wisdom of love. There's a wisdom of obedience. There's a wisdom of all the virtues. There's a wisdom of, uh, of, of kenosis and service and obedience and, and all of it. Uh, we could spend a long time just pondering the, the passion of the Lord, rereading the passion narratives in Scripture and, and harvesting from each word, each detail, the wisdom of God. That's how St. Thomas lived his life. That's how he lived his life. And it's how you and I are called to live our lives. So let's ask ourselves a question. Once we sort of get a sense of the wisdom of the cross, and, and we, we can only get a sense of it in a, in a talk like this, you know, we can only sort of broach the topic and begin to, to circle around it and notice the details, you know, but, but there's just a vast amount of, of mystery and, and material in the scriptures to go into. We can only broach the topic here, but, but once we start to get a sense of the wisdom of the cross, the next question we need to ask is, what's the proper response? I mean, what is the proper response to the, to the wisdom of the cross? I think the first thing we need to say is, I believe in the wisdom of the cross. I believe in it. I, and, to, and to exercise faith in the wisdom of the cross. This is the foundation of the whole spiritual life. St. Thomas is so clear. He says it in, in a few different places. Faith is the foundation of the entire supernatural edifice. So the whole uh, life of the infused virtues and gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit and the Beatitudes is all founded on faith. So we need to believe in the cross of Jesus Christ and to believe in the wisdom of it. You see, many people can look at the cross or look at the crucifix 
and they don't get it. It doesn't, it's not clear just to our senses, the wisdom of the whole thing. To many people, the cross seems strange. And many people are even disturbed a little bit when they go into Catholic churches and see the crucifix hanging there front and center. They wonder why we do this. We need to believe this is not just simply a tragic, you know, a misfortune that happened to this man, and that this, this is not just a tale of suffering and woe, that there is in the cross of Jesus a wisdom. There is a love. There is a fulfillment of eternal designs. There's a, a revelation of a magnitude of love that's unprecedented and unmatched anywhere else in the world. We need to believe the cross of Jesus Christ is the greatest work of love that the world has ever known. And to give us that demonstration of love is part of the wisdom of the cross. And we, we need to believe that all the virtues that a human being could want or desire are on display here. We just need to, to ponder the mystery and we'll find them. We need to believe in the wisdom of the cross. And, and to believe in the wisdom of the cross, we need to hear. We need to hear it proclaimed, and we need to read about it in sacred scripture. So one great way to respond to this wisdom of the cross that we've been discovering is, is, to, is to go to the scriptures, to read the passion narratives of the scriptures and the gospels, and to read what St. Paul has to say about the cross of Christ. And as we read these these wonderful things in scripture, uh, and as we meditate on what we're reading and hearing, something of the wisdom of the cross will begin to fill our minds, even without us realizing it's happening. It's mysterious. It's mystical. It's, it's spiritual how the Lord communicates or transmits the wisdom of the cross to our minds by the light of his grace. It's just how God works. So even if we're not feeling something, even if we're not blown away, even if we're not having amazing you know, experiences like a lot of the saints may have had, or a lot of mystics may have had, if we're just simply listening to the word of God and pondering this, the, this, what the scriptures tell us about the passion and, and death of the Lord, we will grow into the wisdom of the cross in the depths of our mind. It will happen by grace. That's the first thing we need to do is respond in faith. But there's a second thing we need to do to respond to the wisdom of the, of the cross. The second thing we need to do is ask the Lord for his mercy. I mean, that's why he went to the cross. He went to the cross out of merciful love for you and for me. And he went to the cross in order to deliver us from our sins. And he went to the cross to bear death on behalf of us all. So now we no longer die the, the permanent death. Christ destroyed the permanent death when he rose from the dead. We die a temporary kind of death now. But we know there's going to be a resurrection of the body. And that our souls and bodies will come together again and we will live again in our bodies, okay? Thanks to the, the death and resurrection of the Lord. So the Lord did all of that in order to show us mercy. And he wants us to drink deeply of his mercy and to receive the forgiveness of our sins, to receive new life, for the chains to be broken in our lives and for us to go forward and walk the path of life, the narrow way that leads to life. So we need to come before the Lord, Jesus Christ and him crucified, and not only believe in the wisdom of the cross, but make an appeal to Christ and realize you did all this according to eternal designs for me and for us, for our salvation. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, 
a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on us all. The, the appropriate response to the cross is to ask for mercy. The Jesus prayer is a great way to do it, to just say that Jesus prayer throughout the day, slow and steady, as we go, when we can, and just keep asking Christ and him crucified for mercy. That's, that's the appropriate response to the cross. Now, there's a third thing we need to do that's important to respond. We also need to have recourse to the sacraments of the church. The wisdom of the cross is not far away. And it's not just 2,000 years ago in the historical past. And it's not just somewhere up in the heavenly places where Jesus is. The wisdom of the cross, the whole wisdom of the cross is here in the church, on earth, in the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the wisdom of the cross right before our very eyes in the form in which the Lord wished to uh, appear to us, okay, in the, in the appearances of bread and wine, but they're just appearances. The reality is that the Eucharist is Jesus Christ himself. And the, and the Eucharistic celebration, the Mass, is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ himself. So the whole wisdom of the cross is there in the sacrament and in the sacrifice. If you want to draw near to the, the wisdom of the cross, the place to go is to Mass or the Divine Liturgy, or to Eucharistic adoration. Draw near to the Eucharist. And open your heart to the wisdom of the cross, which is there in, in the Eucharist. I mean, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Dominic, all of the saints could spend hours sitting at the foot of the cross, pondering Jesus Christ and him crucified. And the wisdom that it, that it reveals and the love that's there for us in the cross. But there's something more in the Eucharist than just a representation like a crucifix. In the Eucharist, we have the actual reality, Jesus Christ himself, the power of God and the wisdom of God, St. Paul calls him. And we have all the wisdom of the cross right there. So let us fly to the Eucharist. Let us draw near to the, the blessed sacrament, the sacrament of the altar, and let us abide with Christ in the Eucharist, at the Mass, of course, but also in Eucharistic adoration, and draw near and, and, and let the very presence of Christ you know, imprint his wisdom upon our hearts. That's the appropriate response to the wisdom of the cross. Now, of course, in order to be prepared to go to Mass and celebrate the Eucharist, in order to be in a worthy state, we need to have recourse to the sacrament of penance and to go to that great sacrament to receive the forgiveness of our sins and to be renewed in, in sanctifying grace from time to time, okay? That sacrament is so powerful and, and the, the, the sacrament of penance, all of the sacraments, in fact, they're effective. They have working power that flows through them, but that working power is coming directly from Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's flowing through the sacrament. And it belongs to the wisdom of Christ and the wisdom of the cross, that, that the, the greatness of the cross, the grace that Christ obtained for us, would come into our lives, flow into our lives through the sacraments. And that sacrament, the sacrament of penance, is particularly a appropriate way to respond to the wisdom of the cross. I think St. John Vianney used to say that you know, every absolution that we receive was purchased for us at the price of his blood. It's powerful to consider and to realize you know, what a gift we receive every time we go to the sacrament of penance so that we can be ready for the great sacrament, which is the Eucharist, you know.
So that's the wisdom of the cross of Jesus Christ. A few meditations to share with you and also the way that we should respond to the wisdom of the cross by, by believing in the wisdom of the cross, by making an appeal to Jesus Christ for mercy as, as, as much as we can kind of in an ongoing way and to have recourse to the sacraments and to live our lives meditating and pondering the revelation of the cross of Jesus Christ and the wisdom of the cross. That would be a marvelous fruit of this, this day when we honor St. Thomas for the, on the 750th anniversary of his death. If we could begin to live our lives that way uh, or live them more intensely that way, it would be a marvelous way to honor, honor Christ and honor St. Thomas, each in their own way. So that's the, um, the meditation on the, the wisdom of the cross I wanted to share with you.